boys and girls, Cheeto in the house, the puppet house. Oh yeah, boys and girls, Hootie here, and we got a message for you from the gospel. That's right, we're gonna give you the word, the word in rhyme, baby. Oh yeah. Matthew chapter 5 is the Beatitudes. It helps us to keep a good attitude. Matthew chapter 5 is the Beatitudes. It helps us to keep a good attitude. When Jesus saw the multitudes moving like a tide, he went up a mountain, his disciples by his side. There he opened up his mouth and he began to teach. Blessed are the poor in spirit, heaven's kingdom they will reach. Matthew chapter 5 is the Beatitudes. It helps us to keep a good attitude. Blessed are they who mourn, they'll find joy in mirth. Blessed are the meek and lowly, they'll possess the earth. Blessed are the hungry, and after righteousness they thirst. Surely they'll be satisfied in Satan's bonds, they will burst. Matthew chapter 5 is the Beatitudes. It helps us to keep a good attitude. Matthew chapter 5 is the Beatitudes. It helps us to keep a good attitude. Blessed are the merciful, mercy they'll be given. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are you when insulted, or against you people lie. If persecuted on account of me, I'll wipe the tears from every eye. Rejoice and be very glad, your heaven reward is great. Prophets were persecuted before you, the Holy Scripture stays. Oh yeah. Matthew chapter 5 is the Beatitudes. It helps us to keep a good attitude. Good morning, kids, and welcome to another time together, another lesson in our Beatitude series, God's Blessings for Our Best Attitudes. Now, we've learned the past eight weeks on some of the blessings and the Beatitudes lesson that God has for us. Today is our last week in this series, so we've spent nine weeks learning in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. So as we go through it today, we're going to recap a little bit, and we're going to go through each one, and uh, just to remind you of what they are. And as we finish out today, I want to encourage you to go back, check out our past videos if you missed a week, or if you just happen to want to want to refresh yourself on it. And uh, if you just want to listen to Cheeto and Hoodie, do the Beatitudes rap. Just go back and and watch it anytime on our YouTube channel or. Um, Facebook as well, you can check it out. So, as we go through, we know that we have to get up on our feet, get off our seat. We got to get the wiggles out. We've got to get tuned and ready to go to hear God's words. So, now it's time for our dance party. Here we go. All right. In my wrestling and in my doubts. In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through You 
are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my. to show Here we go. All right. Awesome job. I, you guys did a great job. I hope you're enjoying our songs and our music. As we go through today, we're going to carry on with our Beatitudes lesson. Remember, that's God's blessings for our best attitudes. And we've learned so much over the past couple of weeks how this is the Beatitudes for us, how God wants us to be right? Not a me attitude where we're thinking about ourselves and what we want or the revenge that we need to get, right? But it's the, the attitudes that God would like for us to have, that God wants us to be. And those kinds of attitudes are very unselfish, and it loves God and loves others, and it shows that as we learned the past couple of weeks. So as we go through, before we start, we got to do our memory verse. I hope you're ready. Who remembers where our memory verse is found. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, or you can look on the screen to Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, is where we find our memory verse. Okay, on the count of three, we're going to say it together. Ready? One, two, three. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father Give good gifts to those who ask him. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. And again, that just reminds us that as we read these Beatitudes, God has blessings for us. God has good gifts to give us when we have the right attitude and when we seek after God and we want to live a life that models Christ. We want to be 
Christians who people recognize and say, that person is a good person, that person loves others, that's the kind of person we want to be, children of God. And how much more of those good gifts does our Father in Heaven have for us when we seek Him, when we ask Him? And we talked about that in the Beatitudes. And as we recap today, we'll go back over it. We'll start with Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And we're reading 1 through 12. We're going to finish out with verse 12 today. And our last Beatitude is uh, verse 10. But we'll start here with verse 1. One day... As he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. Now, we'll stop there for just a minute. Remember, these first three blessings, God blesses those who are poor, God blesses those who mourn, and God blesses those who are humble, talk about our personal need for God, our relationship for God. And we have to first recognize that we are poor in spirit. There's no way we can make it to heaven on our own accord. We need Jesus, and we recognize that we need Jesus, and we mourn over our sin and ask God to forgive us, and we humble ourselves. You know, when we praise and worship and we raise our hands, that's an act that shows that we are humbling ourselves and submitting ourselves to the will of God. When we humble ourselves and submit to God's will instead of our will, then we will inherit the whole earth. So those first three Beatitudes, God blesses those who are poor, God blesses those who mourn, God blesses those who are humble, all about our relationship with God as we begin to grow, right? And then it goes into the next set of Beatitudes where we begin to really seek after God's will. We want more from God. And when we do that, it overflows and blesses other people. So, verse 6, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. We hunger and thirst. We seek after God. We crave God's will in our life, and we begin to read our Bible. We begin to praise and worship. We fast. We pray. We spend time with God because we crave Him, and He fills us with the fruits of the Spirit that overflows to others. And that leads us to verse 7. One of those fruits of the Spirit is us showing love and kindness, and that is mercy. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Remember, we learned about the Good Samaritan and how he shown mercy to the Jewish man who was beaten. And that's loving kindness that we should show others. We should show them mercy, for we receive mercy when we do. Our fruits of the Spirit begin to overflow. Verse 8, God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. When we brave God's will and we begin to seek after him, that renews our our heart and our spirit every day. God gives us a pure heart when we first ask Jesus to come into our life and we claim him as our savior. He gives us a new heart. But we're tempted every day all around us to do bad things and things we know we shouldn't do. We're tempted by our friends to come and do something that we know we shouldn't do or say something we know we shouldn't say. And that can take our pure heart and make it unpure again. You know, we are forgiven by Jesus and we now are live to live a life of Christ to be pure so we renew ourselves every day it's called sanctification right and when our hearts are pure and we seek after God then we will see God that is the blessing for they will see God Jesus said seek and ye shall find when we're seeking after God by reading our Bible and praying and praise and worship then our blessing is that we will see God God blesses those who work for peace. We learned about this one last week. God blesses the peacemakers, right? For they will be called the children of God. See, Jesus came to bring peace to the world, to bring reconciliation from us to the Father, to bring peace for a sinful people to a just God. And in order for us 
to be called children of God, we have to model Christ. We live like Christ by accepting him into our hearts and then bringing peace to those around us. But ultimately, it's not about separating people from fighting at school. We want to be peaceful in those situations, of course. But it's about bringing peace to their spirit, telling others about Jesus, bringing them to God and saying, hey, do you know that Jesus died for you and he is your savior? He wants you to live in heaven. All you have to do is accept him, right? That's the kind of peace that God wants us to bring to others so that all of us in the whole world can go to heaven. That is God's ultimate will, ultimate plan for us. But we are called the children of God when we bring others to peace with God. And that leads us to verse 10. It's our verse for today, our last beatitude today. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. I want you to look at that for just a moment. Before we get into what persecution means, look at the blessing. We're persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Now, if we go back to the first beatitude that we learn is verse 3. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So here we have the same gift, but God is showing us that all of these are tied together. When we can't have one without the other. We must have, when we have these attitudes and our focus is on God, they all come together, right? The kingdom of heaven is ours because we show the attitudes that God wants us to have because we are children of God who act mercifully, who act with a pure heart and that loves others. We are children of God who crave for his will in our life and we thirst and hunger after Jesus. We are children of God because we first turned to God and accepted him as our savior. We mourned over our sin and we humbled ourselves to give his will main control in our life and not our will. So what does it mean to be persecuted for doing right? I have a short video here that I think is going to be uh, fun for you guys, and then we'll continue on. Here we go. Do you know what this is? This is a Bible. Today we're going to learn about something Jesus said in the book of Matthew. Jesus said God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. What does the word persecuted mean? Oh, let's put our thinking caps on and find out. Oh my, to be persecuted means that someone is hurting you because of what you believe. That's not good. Lots of Christians have been hurt because they believe in Jesus, and, well, that sounds like a scary thing. It's definitely not what God wants to happen. But bad things do happen to people who do the right thing. I mean, think about a superhero. They always do the right thing, and they always try to save the day. There's a super villain who wants to stop the hero. Well, Christians are are like everyday superheroes who want everyone to know Jesus loves them. And and there is a super villain named Satan who wants to stop that. One way that he tries to stop Christians is by persecuting them. He uses people who don't know Jesus yet to hurt Christians. This makes God sad whenever his people are hurt. But, but there's good news! I, I promise! The good news is that God is with us no matter what we face. And he promises to bless those who are persecuted. He said that the kingdom of heaven will be theirs. So even if life on earth is hard, and even if we're put down for what we believe in, remember, 
that one day you will be able to be with God in heaven and his kingdom will be yours. There you go. God blesses those who are persecuted. We know that we have an enemy, Satan, who uses other people who may not have turned their life to Jesus yet. And it's up to us to tell them about Jesus. But Satan is working all around us. He is our enemy who wants to keep us from having the blessings that God has for us. He, want, he came to kill, steal, and destroy, the Bible says. And he wants to steal and destroy all the blessings that God has for you. And he uses other people to do that. When we are persecuted, that could be a bully at school calling us names. You know, Jesus freak, you holy roller. I can't believe you go to church, right? And that could hurt. That can be hurtful to us. It could be uh, someone who wants to have a physical fight, right? We could be persecuted in that way. But you know, there are many places in the world where persecution is a lot more severe than what we have it here. I'm thankful that persecution here means people won't agree with us, and they may call us names. They lie about us. They say terrible things. But that's usually the extent of it. In other places in the world, you can be persecuted in many different ways. Like, it's illegal to have a Bible, and they'll throw you in jail. It's illegal for you to go out into the street and raise your hands and praise and worship or to proclaim the name of Jesus. I mean, they could burn your house, take your family, even kill you in some places around the world for believing in Jesus. And I would ask you, if you were persecuted in that way, are you ready, are you willing to be called a child of God, to be the Christian God wants you to be, to have our best attitudes at all times, even when we're persecuted to the point that we're thrown in jail, to the point where our houses are burned down or even threatened to be killed? God wants us to know that the kingdom of heaven is ours and that our goal is heaven. Our prize is heaven. Our prize isn't for people to like us here. We want to love others the best that we can. But if they can't love us back and they want to persecute us, that's okay because we know our gift, our blessing is in heaven with a loving Father. Right? Now, the funny thing about this beatitude is the only one that Jesus carried on and explained even more. That's verses 11 and 12. Remember, our series is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. The beatitudes end at verse 10, but God, or Jesus expands on that verse 10 a little bit more in verses 11 and 12. He wanted you to really understand what he was saying. This is what persecution looks like. He reiterates again, God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you. They lie about you. They say all sorts of evil things about you because you are my followers. That happens to us all the time, doesn't it? Maybe you go to school and people want to call you names because you go to church. Or they think you know, you're funny and they, they make fun of you. They mock you because you're praying over your lunch at the lunch table. And, you know, they might do something like boom, 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 making fun of you, right? People do that all the time. And Jesus is saying, you're blessed with the kingdom of heaven is yours because you are my follower. Verse 12, what does he say that we can do about it? Do we get revenge? Do we mock them back? Do we make fun of them as well? No. What does he say? Be happy about it. Be very glad. Jesus wants us to be absolutely excited about the fact that we are serving God to the point where people have taken notice and they want to persecute us. And sometimes that doesn't make much sense, but if people are noticing that you're serving God in that way and they're persecuting you, you're probably doing things that the enemy is trying to attack. The enemy is trying to knock you down because he knows that there are blessings for you. And if the enemy is attacking you, then you know you're doing the right thing. Right? Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, 
the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Satan has been persecuting Christians since the beginning of time, right? Satan has been coming against through use of other people since the beginning of time. All the ancient prophets and, you know, Noah, Moses, and Isaiah, and Ezekiel, and Jeremiah, all of these old prophets, they were all persecuted and made fun of. You know, if you know the story, you remember the story of Noah, people made fun of him for telling them that they need to repent and turn to God as he was building an ark and they'd never seen rain before and he was telling them that rain was going to come down. And when it happened, they were sorrowful because they didn't listen. And you know, God wants to use you to bring other people to him as he was using Noah to tell them. And it's your job. You can't make them change their hearts. But you can tell them about Jesus. And we can't be afraid. If I can leave you with one thing today is that we cannot be afraid. We have to recognize that people are going to make fun of us. People are going to lie about us. They may even try to hurt us. But if we are walking the way that God wants us to walk, we are seeking after his will in our life. The kingdom of heaven is ours. Because we are children of God. I want to leave you with one thing. If you turn, you're still in uh, chapter 5, but turn over to verse 43 in Matthew. Jesus is talking about loving our enemies. It's so easy sometimes to snap back at a bully at school. Or even to get in fights. Even with our brothers and sisters. It's easy for us to get mad and try to get revenge and get them back for what they did, right? But this is what Jesus has to say about it. When we're persecuted, when we have enemies come our way, verse 43, you have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of the Father in heaven, for he gives sunlight to both evil and the good, And he sends rain on the just and unjust alike. What that's saying is that we are all, whether we are evil and we make fun of people and we do bad things or we try to live the way God wants us to live and we're good, we all are under the sunlight of God, under the protection of God. God loves all of his children. He wants to see all of his children come to heaven. So love your enemies, and when they come against you, here's the key line. When they persecute you, Jesus says, pray for those who persecute you. Pray. That can be hard to do. Sometimes we want to react. When someone punches us, we want to punch them back. But Jesus says, pray for those who persecute you. Lift them up and give it to God. Keep them in positive thoughts in your mind because you want to see the best for them. And that is loving others the way God wants us to love them. Remember, we need to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength and love others. And the way to do that is to seek Him and to have our best attitudes and not our me attitudes. Well, we have accepted Jesus. We humble ourselves to His will. We are merciful to those around us. We are peaceful to those around us. And we read our Bible, hunger and thirst after Him. Pray for others and pray to God. Father, we thank You for Your Holy Spirit. We thank You for Your Word and for Your Beatitudes that You teach us how we can have our best attitudes, Lord. I pray that You bless every student watching today and in the future. I pray that you bless every family, Lord, that you will bring peace into their homes and every situation that they have, and that you draw us all closer to you, Lord. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your son who died on the cross for us, and we thank you for your mercy. And we say all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I want to thank you again for joining us. Now, next week, it's Father's Day. So, 
if you haven't thought of anything fun or cool to do for dad, be thinking of that. And we're going to have a special uh, lesson next week on Father's Day. I hope you have a great week. And as we get started with a new series, we're going to have some more fun things. And uh, we're going to do things a little bit different. I know things have been different the past couple of weeks because of uh, the COVID thing. And, and uh, you know, we're not in here playing games and having as much fun as we normally would do. But we're going to ramp some things up with our videos until we can get back together again. So until next time, I'm praying for you. I love you and hope to see you soon. Be sure to message me on Facebook and join our Day by Day Kids Facebook page, and we'll see you soon. God bless.